The desert has a magnetic attraction that's hard to explain. This place has such beauty in the landscape, in the environment, and diversity. The Sonoran Desert, as one of the you know, many deserts around the world, the Sonoran Desert in particular is one of the luscious deserts you can ever encounter. Depending on the time of year, the desert always looks good. Whether it's with an ironwood with purple flowers or with a Palo Verde tree with yellow flowers, there's always something that pops. We're sitting at DC Ranch, uh, which is a community within Scottsdale. Scottsdale's about 35 miles north to south, and we're geographically in the middle. And for the most part, what's north of us, it's just houses. So we feel like we're slightly to the north, looking down over everything, because the really vibrant hub of activity is really south of where we are. The evolution and design is interesting spectrum right now between traditional and contemporary uh, thoughts. We chose contemporary for what just was a, a cleaner, calmer feeling about detail and about material interactions. Well, what really stands out to me is that although some of the building materials on the exterior of the house are heavy, Western regional materials, overall to me, the house looks light because the roof looks like it's floating, it's very, very thin, it's cantilevered in a lot of areas to get passive solar, but I think it has an overall light feel, and I think you can tell right away uh, that it's something special. The original idea for the home was somewhat conventional, where you have your primary living spaces on the main level, secondary spaces on the upper level. But after getting up on a ladder, realizing that 12 foot makes a huge difference in the desert environment of what you can see and the vistas that you're afforded, gave me an epiphany to flip the house upside down and essentially say, why don't we try putting our primary living at the main level, secondary spaces at the lower level? So when you walk through the front door, the front door is actually, you know, a 10 foot tall door. So it looks formidable, but you get a grip on it and it feels substantial and quality. And then you enter into this foyer that is uh, fairly serene. It leads your eye to the stairs that take you to the second level. We also put in uh, some metal rods that are kind of a veil to the game room. So uh, while you're at the entrance, you have a little sense of what's beyond into the entertainment room, but your eye is led to the stairs, which leads you to the main level of the house. The first floor, because of this idea of elevating the primary living space to the second, was then the residual spaces of saying, we have guest accommodations down there. We have actually two bedrooms, plus a guest room and a recreation room that all lead out to the pool and the outdoor environment. So it's a great indoor-outdoor interaction for those spaces. Although this house has Western regional materials, I think the architecture, I think you could pick this house up and put it in Hermosa Beach or Santa Monica, and we could tell the same story with you and have it feel like it was appropriate. We absolutely considered all the indoor outdoor connectivity that we could. We used, you know, 20 foot wide sliding doors to just kind of open up the house and let the desert breeze come through. Later in the day, it starts cooling down on that whole side of the house. And by evening, it is just an absolute treat to be outdoors in the desert environment. So it's just quiet. You've got the full moon sometimes and you're just swimming in a pool. So all that makes a great connection. So when you arrive at the top of the stairs, you have this moment of, again, immediate connection to the outdoors. It's really the first aha moment. We also then add a bridge element. The bridge is somewhat uh, a gesture about privacy because to the right is the master suite, to the left is your primary living space. So the bridge is a little bit like welcome across the bridge, now you're in the living space and, uh, and it gives us a kind of a visual separation to the master suite. When you arrive across the upper bridge, you enter the main living space, and that's when you really get a sense of the panorama of the entire second level. The sun is, for the most part, high enough in the southern sky all year that you could look due south and not even have the shades down. And when the sun starts to set at the end of the day, the house shields 
Dale and his family from the setting sun while he's on his outdoor living patio. So that outdoor living patio from a solar standpoint functions all day long. It's kind of a common theme where people spend most of their time with their families. It's in the kitchen in the family room. And having this connectivity where the table is right in between those two elements, the kitchen and the family room, I think really brings it all together. And I also would like to mention that we put a booth in Dale's house 20 plus years ago. So Dale is Dale is a diner guy. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Dale is a booth guy. I'm a little booth crazed because of, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the comfortable place when people come over, people just start gravitating. It's like, have a seat. And next thing you know, you're having a drink there and just enjoying great conversation. The advantages of the social engagement within all spaces is uh, absolutely afforded by an open uh, floor plan. So as you walk from the primary living space of the living, dining, and kitchen, you then evolve back into the smaller, more private spaces of a private office. Uh, my wife works here all day long, so you have an enjoyable space to connect to the living that you have to do your work every day. So same thing, there's panoramic views from the office of the mountains, and that just is refreshing every part of the day, because uh, it's just constantly changing and evolving. When you get to the top of the stairs, you have this divide between the major living space and what is the private sanctuary of a master suite. And I wanted it to feel like a sanctuary, meaning you walk in and you feel, again, an instant calm just because of the colors and the materials. And you still get this vista that you get to enjoy waking up or going to sleep at night. We walk through a dressing room, so there's kind of this fluid motion of getting up in the morning, walking in, grabbing what you need to dress, going into a spa-like environment, and that was really just materials again, the, the soft etched glass, the richness of the Macassar ebony cabinets, and the kind of spa wood deck underneath the tub. So you get this feeling of, of calmness in the bath areas, and you go from bathing to dressing to on about your day. This house is a good example of a very, very low maintenance house. This particular house with the metal siding and the fully synthetic exterior stucco system and the deep passive solar, it's built with as much low maintenance in mind as possible. I just find people come in from all different backgrounds with all different preconceptions of what they like, uh, but they walk away thinking I could live here. <laughs>